Hello and welcome back to my channel and welcome to another CentOS tutorial. And today I am playing around with a green screen. I have no idea if I'm going to keep this thing around. I'm going to try to use this in a few videos and just have some fun. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Do you think that green screens are a cliche, stupid idea or do you think it's actually pretty cool? Let me know. But you didn't come here to hear about my green screen, you came for CentOS, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to add additional repositories. So let's go ahead and dive in. So first of all, I want to talk a little bit about what a repository is before I show you how to add them. Now I've mentioned in a previous video that in Linux we have software repositories that are basically servers we can get packages from. And packages refer to the software that we install on a Linux distribution. And the reason we say packages instead of software is because not all packages are, well, software. Some of them are libraries or required components that make the application work. Effectively, some applications, actually quite a few, are split into multiple different packages because different packages might require the same library, so it doesn't always make sense to have the same library twice if you only need to have it on your system one time. So that's why we use the term packages when we refer to software. And repositories are where we get our packages from. We have the default repositories that come from CentOS that they maintain. And there's some other ones out there that we can add to our system that gives us the ability to install software we wouldn't normally have access to. Now, what I'm going to do is show you where the repository information is stored. And then we'll go ahead and add a new repository. So what I'm going to do is cd into slash etsy yum.repos.d and even though the command to install packages is dnf it's still called yum in the file system. So as you can see here we have a bunch of repo files and each one of these files corresponds to an individual repository. So what I'm going to do is open up the first one And of course it says on the bottom that it's unwritable. I understand that, but that doesn't matter. So if I scroll down here, we can see that there's some information about this particular repository. So up here at the top, this stanza basically begins the section that's configuring the AppStream repository. AppStream is the name of the repository. And we can see that it has an actual name right here. It's just going to be CentOS, and then the release version, which is a variable. We haven't gone into variables just yet and then the name right here. So that's arbitrary. You can call it whatever you want if you maintain your own repository. But what's more important is this line right here, the mirror list. This gives us basically the address for where the packages are going to be found. This is where the repository is found online. This is a CentOS repository. And we have some more variables here. I'm not going to go into too much detail on those variables. But basically what you are seeing here is that this is where you configure a repository and each repository has its own file. Now we're not using base URL right here and don't worry too much about that because when you want to add a repository you'll get all of this information here. Now GPG check is equal to one so basically one is yes, zero is no, basically true or false. So this means that we do want to check the GPG key on packages from this repository. That makes sure that the repository packages are signed and that they match the key to ensure that you don't have a man in the middle package that sneaks its way into your system. Signed packages are safe and you should always have this enabled unless you have no other option. Now right here on this line it says enabled equals one. So if I was to change this to zero, and I'm not going to save the changes, I can't anyway. And then if I did save the changes, it would mean that this repository is disabled. If I run any DNF or yum commands, it's going to ignore this repository. So that's how you can turn something off. And this GPG key right here, 
basically tells the system where to find the GPG key for this repository to check to make sure that the packages that it contains are signed properly. So I'm going to close out of here and I'll say no, I'll discard changes. Now I'm going to give you guys an example of a package I want to install that is not available. So I'll do DNF search htop, which is my favorite application for monitoring system resources. But unfortunately, the package isn't found. It's just not available. So one thing that I can do is install the Apple repository, which is probably the most famous repository for CentOS. Now, as you can see here, I don't have anything with the name Apple, E-P-E-L, it looks like this. I don't have anything with that name here in my list of repo files, so I don't have that repository at all on my system here. When it comes to adding a new repository, there's two different ways at least that we can do this and probably other variations beyond that. One thing you can do is you can add another .repo file. Perhaps you will Google an application that you want to install that's not available and the instructions you find might actually tell you to create a new .repo file and populate the contents with what you see on that particular web page or the package information might be available in a package itself. So what I'm gonna do now is install the package that corresponds to the Apple repository. So I can do this, sudo dnf install apple, E-P-E-L hyphen release, and then I can press enter. And it's going to install one package, so it was able to find that package, and I'll do Y and then enter. We'll get back to the video shortly, but I want to take a moment to thank my sponsor, Linode. In fact, there's never been a better time to try Linode because from now until May 31st, 2020, Linode is giving every single account access to object storage for free. That's right, whether you've created an account way back in 2003 or just today, you can take advantage of free object storage at Linode until May 31st. And what precisely is object storage, you might ask? Object storage is an easy way for you to store and access data without the need for a running server. And it's perfect for data that doesn't regularly change, like images and other multimedia files, important backups, or giant archives for servers that might need more storage space. One of the best use cases for object storage is hosting your own static website. You can have a site up and highly available on Linode's object storage service with as little as an HTML and CSS file. To give object storage a try for free and get an additional $20 credit on your new Linode account, sign up at www.linode.com slash learn Linux TV. I really appreciate Linode as a sponsor. Not only are they a sponsor, they've been my cloud infrastructure provider for quite some time now, and their service is awesome. Definitely check them out. Now let's get back to the video. And there we go. The Apple repository should now be installed. And sure enough, we have some Apple repositories. We see one right here and one right here. So now that it's installed on the system, I should be able to do DNF search htop. Let's see if it finds it now. And well, what do you know? There is the htop package. That was what I wanted to install. So I can do sudo dnf install htop. And it wants to install one package. That's fine. Y and then enter. And it's installed. And sure enough, HTOP is available, which again is a really cool program for monitoring system resources. We will cover monitoring system resources in a future video. But now we have HTOP available, which is pretty cool. So now let's take a look at the Apple file. I'm just going to go ahead and open that up. And we have a lot more information here, as you can see. And it's beyond the scope of the video to cover absolutely everything here. But basically all you really need to know is that enabled, again, is whether or not the repository will actually be used when you do any kind of package management on your system. 
GPG check, of course, should be one because you do want to only download signed packages, especially on a server. And then, of course, you have the URL where the packages are coming from in the first place. Now, for the most part, it's very unlikely that you will be in a situation where you have to create your own repo file from scratch. Most of the time, what you'll do is you'll look for the software you want to install. Maybe you will Google it, something like that. You'll get the information for the required repository on that website from the software manufacturer. You'll follow the directions and you'll go ahead and enter in this information or they will provide a package that will have this information built in. If you do maintain your own software repository someday, then that would be a use case to create your own repo file. But for the purposes of this video, I wanted you guys to know that you can get additional repos and there's other ones out there that will offer you additional software that's not normally available. And I just gave you an example of that with the Apple package that we've installed, which gives us the Apple repository. And in case you're curious, Apple stands for Extra Packages for Enterprise Linux. CentOS is considered an enterprise Linux distribution. And what enterprise Linux actually means is that it is a Linux distribution or a classification of a Linux distribution that is primarily built for servers in enterprise corporations, companies, businesses, things like that. It's built to be rock solid, something you can run your servers on, although you know some people do use CentOS on laptops and desktops as well, but its primary purpose is for servers. And the Apple repository gives you packages that aren't normally available in the default repositories, so that basically allows you to extend CentOS even further. And other repositories out there, as I've mentioned, will give you additional options as well. So there you go. I hope that was helpful for you guys. I enjoy making these tutorials. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I'll have a new CentOS video uploaded for you guys very soon. And when I do, I'll see you there.